Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Scripture passage uh, for our message uh, this morning is taken from John chapter 8. I invite you to turn with me uh, back to uh, the bulletin, uh, page 7, as I read this uh, passage, uh, Jesus' words in John chapter 8. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father and you do not And you do what you have heard, and you do what you have heard from your father. These words of Jesus uh, remind us of the importance of freedom. We celebrate uh, Independence Day, uh, of course, as a nation uh, today, uh, this weekend. We know that on July 2nd of 1776, more than a year after the start of the American Revolutionary War, the Continental Congress, which was made up of the 13 colonies, representatives from the 13 colonies, they got together on July 2nd of 1776 and they decided that it was time to declare their independence from Great Britain. And so they drew up a document uh, and two days later on July uh, 4th, uh, they ratified this Declaration of Independence. And a month later, August 2nd, they all signed the Declaration of Independence. And that declaration is one of the many uh, uh, documents that our nation is founded upon. This quest, this desire for freedom and for independence. This is very important to us as Americans, this independence. The word independence means not to allow anyone to rule over or to exert power and control over you, to be free to live your life on your own terms. That's what the word independence means. And as a nation, we have fought valiantly and tirelessly to ensure that all the people of this nation could enjoy that independence, free from tyranny and oppression, free from those governing over us in control and power. And uh, in fact, this uh, Declaration of Independence, this quest for independence is so important that over all these years, uh, so many uh, battles have been fought, so many wars have been waged, and so many lives have been lost so that we can continue to be a free nation, uh, to be able to have this uh, independence. And as we celebrate that today as a nation, of course we give thanks. Uh, for the many uh, people who have served over the years and even given them their lives as the ultimate sacrifice uh, for our nation. So we give thanks to that. As we think about this independence, which is so important to us as a nation, I thought about that this week quite a bit. And I, as I was thinking about it, I was realizing that this this quest for independence uh, is actually part of our DNA. It's, It's innate to us. It's who we are as humans, and, and we want to be free. We want to, to be independent from the rule or control of others. That's just part of our nature. Unfortunately, that also involves our relationship to God, doesn't it? We want to be free and independent even from God, though we don't like to admit it. That's part of our nature. You see, we want to live life on our own terms. We don't want somebody telling us what to do and not to do. We want to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. And we so want that life where we can have no boundaries, no restraints, no limits. And we want to be able to have these freedoms and these liberties in life. And we want to be able to have happiness, and we'll do whatever it takes to have happiness, whatever brings us happiness and pleasure. And quite frankly, God gets in the way. God gets in the way of our independence because God has given us laws and requirements 
and limits. God says to us, you can go this far, but no farther. You can do this, but you can't do that. God sometimes can be seen in our sinfulness as an evil tyrant who's just trying to control us, just trying to spoil our day, ruin all of our fun in life get in the way of our pursuit of happiness. Sometimes we don't like God ruling over us. We have this quest for an independence from Him. Of course, we know that goes back a long way, doesn't it? It goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. When our first parents, there in the garden, Adam and Eve, as they walked with God and dwelt with God, He gave them all that they needed all that they needed. They had life and happiness there in the garden with God. And then comes the tempter. The old evil foe, Satan, disguised as a serpent, slithers into that garden, and he whispers these words of temptation to Adam and Eve. And the words were simply, if you eat from this tree then you will be like God. Up until this point, you've been under God, doing what God says. Don't eat from this tree. Don't go there. Don't do that. You've been under God, but if you eat from this tree, Satan tempts, then you won't be under him, under his tyrannical oppression, but now you will be like him. You don't have to rely upon God to tell you what to do. You'll know right and wrong, good and evil for yourselves. You can blaze your own path, live your own life, and enjoy that happiness that you deserve. That's the temptation there in the garden. Eat from this fruit and you'll be like God. In other words, you won't need God anymore over you. And that seed of temptation took root. And it blossomed because it gave them a different perspective. Up until that point, they had trusted God, they believed in Him, and they they followed Him, but now, now they can live free from God and live their own lives. And when they sunk their teeth into that forbidden fruit, they ratified their declaration of independence. They got their independence from God, and they thought that that independence from Him would give them life, liberty, and happiness. But all that got them was chaos, calamity, destruction, and pain, and suffering, and sickness. And this pursuit of life only ended in death because of their de- in the declaration of independence from God. And since that time, each and every one of us is born with that same natural inclination. Really, that's what sin is. Those, those thoughts that we think we shouldn't be thinking and those attitudes that we have and those words that we speak we shouldn't be speaking and those actions and those deeds, all that sin really is is us raising our fist in protest to God and declaring our independence from Him. We will do what we want, God, when we want it, how we want to do it, no matter what. We are free to live our lives the way we want. That's what sin is. And we declare our independence from God each and every time we sin. And it doesn't bring us the happiness that we desire. But instead, it pulls us further and further away from God. Jesus says in our reading this morning from John chapter 8, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And then he goes on to explain what that truth is. The truth is this. If anyone sins then they are a slave to that sin. Sin does not bring freedom and liberty and happiness. Anybody, Jesus says, who sins is a slave to that sin. Sin brings bondage. Sin brings chains and ropes and ties us down. Anyone who sins is a slave to sin. That's what sin does. It enslaves us. It ruins our freedom. And then Jesus goes on to say, but if the Son has set you free, 
then you are free indeed. Freedom does not come from ignoring God and ignoring His Word and ignoring His laws. No, freedom comes only from the Son. Only the Son can set us free. And the Son, Jesus, the Son of God, has set us free from our sins, from the tyranny and the oppression of sin and death and the devil. The Son has set us free. And freedom, true freedom, is not free. True freedom comes at a price. And Jesus has paid that price for our freedom. Jesus lived that life that you and I don't live, can't live, don't desire to live. Jesus lived that perfect life for us in complete dependence upon His heavenly Father in life. And yet Jesus willingly went to the cross to pay the price for sin. Sin that entangles us, sin that enslaves us and enslaves the whole world. Jesus went to the cross to pay that price. He was lashed to the cross, tied to the cross, bound to the cross, chained to the cross by our sins. And He gave up His life as that price, as that sacrifice for our sins. And He was bound and tied and chained up by death, the wages of sin. Freedom is never free. Jesus paid the price to secure our freedom through his death. And yet he rose from the grave on that third day. With his resurrection from the grave, he has destroyed the power of sin, death, and the devil. He has removed those bonds. He has broken those chains. Only in Christ do we have true freedom. If the Son sets us free, then we are free indeed. And as you and I gather this day on Independence Day and we celebrate the independence of our nation, more than that, we remember what Christ has done for us. That He has set us free from our sins through His death and resurrection. As we focus on those things, we realize that true freedom is not found in living a life independent of God. True freedom is found living in dependence of God. We are completely dependent upon God for all things. Because God the Heavenly Father has loved us so much and sent His Son to die and rise again. God the Heavenly Father loves us so much and He gives us all that we need to support this body and life as we gather and we think about the, the blessings of this nation, we would start first with recognizing the gifts that God gives to us. Our spouses, our, our children, our grandchildren, family members, all gifts from God. And our friends, the people sitting next to us here in our pews and our church, our friends and other friends and acquaintances, all gifts from God. And our homes and places where we live, a roof over our heads, and the food on our tables, and the clothes on our back, all these material things, all gifts from God. And yes, our nation. This nation that we love. Not a perfect nation. A nation that has its problems and its struggles. But a nation that still declares its independence and allows for us to have these liberties and these freedoms that we enjoy, including what we're doing right now, being able to gather together the freedom uh, to worship, to be able to gather together and receive more and more of those blessings that God gives to us, the blessings that come to us because Christ has set us free through His death and resurrection. As we gather here, and each and every time we gather here, as the pastor says these words to you, your sins are forgiven. That's Christ telling you that you have been set free from sin. And in that baptismal water, there is freedom in Christ. And at this altar, Christ gives us food for freedom, His very body and blood. As we gather here, freedom rings out. We are free in Christ. We are completely dependent upon Him. 
And that's a wonderful thing, a joyous gift. 245 years ago, the Declaration of Independence was signed, and our nation declared its independence. And over those years, many people have given of their lives for the sake of our nation, because freedom does not come free. And over 2,000 years ago, Jesus, the very Son of God, gave up his life as that perfect sacrifice on the cross and rose from the grave in victory so that we would know what true freedom is. Freedom, complete dependence upon God. Today and every day, let true freedom ring. Amen. May the peace of God which transcends all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.